What's going on everybody? Welcome to Simulation for the Nation and welcome for the very first time to Meadow Grove Farm. Um, this is a new map that has been entered into FSUK.com's uh, Modern Mania competition. This map has been created by Nathan6930 Photography. He's very kindly uh, provided me with this a little bit early uh, to have a quick look around. Um, but this video will be coming out now on... Um, Sunday, I imagine, when we've actually got a little bit of, um, everyone's had a little bit of time to have a play in it uh, themselves. So, it is now available for public download. Um, oh, there's a car coming. Let's get back. Uh, but we are, we're taking over a new farm here. Um, we, we're going to get into the, uh, the details of everything we have very shortly, but for, to begin with, we're just going to take this uh, lovely old International 1255 XL up to one of our, our dairy unit uh, where we're going to be we're going to have to do a little bit of harrowing on some grasslands to get it uh, kicked into gear because we need to make a lot of silage this year uh, our land here we predominantly have uh, cattle uh, we have a lot of livestock we do have some arable land primarily we use to make sure we have enough straw but for the most part there we do um, we are a, a livestock operation here um, but we're going to be Taking a little turn up here. Got a nice little reflection of my indicator there. So this is Meadow Grove Farm. It is before we go too much further, let's just bring up our little map here and have a look and see. It's a large farm, uh, lots of little fields in there, which is really good and really unique. As you can see there's a great level of detail onto the map as well. Uh, and we'll learn a little bit more about that as we as we progress around. Um, but yeah, I, this is a very good effort. If you have, uh, if you are unaware of how the whole, uh, oh, we need to go that way actually, of how the whole Modern Mania uh, map, mapping competition works, uh, go onto fsuk.com, um, go into the forum there and check out Modern Mania. There will be an opportunity to vote for your favourite map, so I do encourage you all to go on there. There are uh, five or six maps in, in total. So do go on there, download them all, have a uh, play around with them, or look around with them all as you please, uh, and figure out which one you like the most there, because there are some stunning maps, uh, there really are. Uh, I'll be featuring a few of them on this channel for sure, uh, so it's definitely worth looking into. Um, now we are just going to wing up here. Yes. Yes, we will. Like I said, currently we have about 10, 15 cows here. Uh, we are going to increase that number significantly right now. But this is our uh, livestock yard, this is our cattle yard. Uh, and we have a lot of grassland around here which I really want to start um, working on just to get it up to speed really. Uh, we're slowly but surely uh, underpinning our operation here, making sure we get enough, all of our equipment in place. Uh, but uh, my main focus was main maintaining and ensuring that the cattle had everything they need. So as you can see, you actually start off with a few silage bales here, so you got enough to keep them going. Uh, you also start off with 10 pigs, which uh, I've opted to sell to focus on the cattle. Uh, and you get sufficient straw, hay, and pig food um, for those guys as well. So this is our cattle yard. Very nice. All the standard features here. You've got the slurry lagoon there as well, with slurry in. Um, so if I go onto our... Head to our livestock page here. You can see the cattle have plenty of silage and water. And we've also got a little bit of liquid manure. A little bit of slurry starting to develop there, so we'll wait. We'll continue to let that um, form, and then we'll add to it when we buy some more cattle here as well. So we're going to buy another. Uh, let's buy another twenty. Uh, ten, and there's twenty for fifty-three thousand. Let's buy another ten. Mm, and make it forty. Okay, fifty-one. All right, so that's a bit better. We've got a few more cows there, so we'll let those guys continue. As you can see, oh, as I mentioned, there's a few bales in there, some straw, some isolated cows. Uh, as we speed through here, this is, you start off with a good array of stock equipment as well. I've sold some of it because I'm going to uh, replace it with some of uh, something a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, you do start with a lot of different things here. Uh, so we're going to leave that international there for just now. We will come back to it. This is a gloriously old gill. This one's pr primarily going to stay up here on the feeder wagon and the bedding uh, straw bedder when we get that brought in as well. Uh, but for now, I just brought it up from the store with the with the uh, grass harrow on the back of it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just jump in back down to the store. There, we'll get a lift down there where we're going to pick up our van. We'll use, and then I'll come back to you when we're back in the road. 
Okie dokie folks, welcome back. We are just currently sitting at one of the little ponds around the farm here. We can actually use this one uh, a bit further around and we can come in here and actually use this as a water fill point which is great. Nice big pond here to get some fresh water for the livestock. So this is our little uh, transit van, the little flatbed we're going to be using here. This primarily will be our little run around. Nice little uh, flatbed on it though so we can always use the carry uh, pallets when we need to. Uh, which is great. So we're going to get back into this and we're going to head down to our main yard where we'll We've got a bit of fertilizer to spread this morning. We need to get our grass growing. We've got a few spring crops drilled in the ground already, uh, and we will be continuing that later on today, uh, pending the weather, so we'll see how that comes along. Uh, but we're just gonna head around this corner here. So this is our yard down to the right-hand side, uh, or one half of our yard at least. It's a nice new modern yard, uh, lots of new modern buildings there that are uh, plenty big enough, if not too big enough, as I crash into a tree there. Uh, for what uh, for our requirements really so we will be using most of these uh, for various different reasons as we slowly get the farm set up and, and operational um, and as we sit parking here let's just park there for now perfect this is our loader tractor on the yard. We have four tractors, so you've seen the International. Uh, this is a John Deere 6910 uh, with a stall loader on the front. Uh, this is a, a main loader tractor. We've often thought about upgrading to a telehandler, but uh, to be honest, the John Deere is still working perfectly. Um, this has a little over 120 horsepower, or little 125 I think it was when it was bought new. Um, it's a little bit old now, it's getting on for about 12, 13 years old, so it doesn't quite have that many ponies left in the tank but uh, still a great tractor uh, without doubt um, starts on the button um, mechanically sound uh, currently this has in the region about two two and a half thousand hours in there so it's been well looked after over the time I've used it um, so we uh, we like to maintain everything keep it in good condition uh, what else have we got in this yard here we've got our, uh, one of our bigger machines here this is the Valtra the Valtra high tech um, this is our 8950. Now this is a lovely tractor. We have a front linkage on. This does a lot of the heavy cultivations along with one with uh, another tractor we're about to have a look at. Uh, but this is really a great machine here. We've got a 3 meter Kuhn Espero uh, drill on the back. This is a direct drill but can, we also use it when we, uh, we do plough land over on a uh, rotational cycle as well. Um, and it can work in that standard perfectly. We have a variety of soil here so having a, a a drill such as this which can combat direct drilling and uh, cultivation is extremely advantageous for us uh, particularly when we've got a lot of clay heavy rocky um, soils on the higher ground and then we have a four meter drill uh, cultivator here this is Kuhn again um, this is just a big chisel plow really manages to rip up all the the rougher um, soil and, and get everything ripped over quite nicely and then just a, a small very simple uh, four furrow very master plow um, we don't have big equipment, we have a suitable equipment on our farms, uh, nothing really in terms of implement, uh, cultivational implements, nothing bigger than 4 metres, um, and our drills and our spreaders are all, uh, spreaders and sprayers are all 24 metres in width as well. Uh, this is a little bale trailer that I knocked up myself on uh, in a lot of spare time in the workshop, um, so this, we might actually try and think about building another one of these because they are very handy and work very well. Uh, just for sitting around bales on there really uh, so we'll have to have a look at that another winter project I, I think um, so we have this field as well this has already been drilled this is going to be uh, some spring oilseed rape um, and we'll get into that a little bit more when we have a look at that one uh, we've been drilling spring oilseed rape we've got some spring barley in the ground as well we've probably got about three fields of spring wheat to go with as well but we'll, we'll continue to push ahead with that uh, over the next few days the weather's looking good for us for now so we've got a little bit of patchy weather in the next few days there, but we should still be able to get some um, get some drilling done. But uh, we'll always push ahead. Um, but for now, we're going to jump into our third uh, or our fourth and final tractor, uh, which is our New Holland. Uh, this is a T7 210. Um, our Hardy sprayer is a 24 meter sprayer. This has GPS compatibility, so we have uh, section control on here, which is very handy, very efficient. It's a big move we're taking on the farm of late to uh, really establish ourselves with the forefront of technology. Our new attractors such as this, um, this new Holland here, the 170 has, um, is very heavily uh, integrated with GPS, which is, for my from personal 
uh, viewpoint, very important, very important. Uh, I like to be the most efficient design we can. I like to ensure that everything we're doing from now on in terms of application of fertilizer or application of chemicals is at the most efficient um, point possible for us. So we're, I think we're achieving that. We are definitely progressing uh, in the right direction. And we've got an old uh, class ro uh, roller cut baler in the corner. That there is about 10 years old, but it's still never missed a trick. We might replace that in a couple of years, but at the moment, it's still clicking on lovely, uh, lovely Roland 250 there. Can't complain about that at all. But for now, we're going to jump into the... Can I open the door from the outside here? No, we'll jump into the 170. Ah, oh, get this fired up and let's get some fertilizer uh, put in the grassland whilst we can. Uh, I li just yesterday brought a load up on the back of the John Deere actually, which is just over the other side of the yard. So we'll pop over there and then we'll get this all filled up. So there we go. Oh, I'll just park here, I think. So we do have on this farm, we don't have, like I say, we don't have a, a large number of big fields. We have a large, large number of small fields. Um, if we have a look at the map here, you can see here we're all kind of a little bit spaced out. Um, earlier on when we were with, uh, when we dropped off the uh, international, we went up to the, um, the sheep yard, to the cow yard, beg your pardon, which is up here at the north of the map. Uh, right now we're down here. Um, so we do, I'll... I'll our, our area of operation is quite spread out, which is not a bad thing. Between us here in the south and the uh, cattle yard in the north there, we do have a variety of fields there spread out. Uh, we have a quite a large concentration around where we are here in the south there. But like I say, uh, we've picked up land and we continue to acquire land wherever we can. Um, whenever there's a good, a good deal, we will look into um, trying to purchase that uh, land where possible. But for now, like I said, we're going to just jump on and spread some fertilizer here today. Um, we picked this up the other yesterday let's take these straps off here and here and maybe yeah lovely stuff so we're using some 201010 uh this is just a generic fertilizer we went for the generic just because we've had some good growth and uh, recently the grass is starting to really kick in but what i want to do is just accelerate that uh, grass growth so we can get a good early first cut of silage um before we come back in and we want to we want to make two if not three cuts so that's what we need to try and think about um, so we, like I say, we've got a generic um, fertilizer here of nitrogen, phosphate, and uh, sulfur. So we can we can put this onto both our grass and also onto our spring barley when it comes to as well. Um, so we need to try and fertilizer is, is unfortunately very expensive. So we are often trying to find ways to reduce the um, the, the cost really. Now, one thing I would say, we've just recently come onto some new bags which are. Blooming heavy, uh, frankly. So I am going to see if I can get two of these at once with the John Deere loader. I'm using the McHale grab for this. This is the best grab I've found. Now I used to have a back weight on here. So what we'll probably just do is see if we can just take the one. Perfect, and then we'll just pop that down. Pick it up a little bit earlier, a little bit closer. That's better. I need to find where my real weight's gone. Alright, we'll get this popped into here. Alright guys, so we'll just get the second load of, um, second bag of fertilizer into the back of the spinner here and we should be good to go. Well being well there, we should take about two ton in here, this is the second bag as I mentioned. Um, so if we have a look at our scale, yeah we've got room for at least one more there, so that'd be about one point, just over 1.8 ton all in. So we'll come back pick up bag number three. I am looking to try and find a proper uh, bag lifter. At the moment, as you can see, we're just using the silage grab, which is, well, less than ideal. Uh, we might take the the one in the back that's just kind of still attached. Uh, we are, like I say, yeah, we are using the silage grab, which is not ideal, but 
at times you've got to work with what you can what you can find. Uh, so what we might have to do here is pull these to the front. Uh, I'll just drop these off the ground because that's a bit too heavy for me without a weight on. And then we'll just take one of these. But yeah, at the moment yet to find one. There's a few I've spoken to a few people who are making them at the moment, uh, so we might have something come some news on that in the future, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, but all we want this should tie us all up nicely. Stop that. There we go. Am I full? No. There we go. That's fine. Perfect then. So, as we look at that map, let's have a look and see what we've actually got to cover today. We've got the field which we're pointing in front of, so obviously we'll just jump into there first. And then we'll get the 64, 66, 65 um, covered. Uh, and then at that stage we'll probably need to refill and then we'll come up we'll have to go and focus our attentions up at the cattle yard as well. So what I might do, I'm just going to pull the John Deere out of the way first. Uh, I'm just going to be whizzing around these fields, they're not that big, they won't take me too long to cover at all. So I'll likely just um, set myself away to do this and then have a little time lapse of showing you as I wing it around. Uh, and then yeah, we'll come back and uh, kind of catch up and see what our next steps will be when we, um, when we get back. So I'll just open this gate first. Quite a narrow little gate, you've really got to hit this square on. Particularly if you're bringing a, uh, one of our forage wagons into here or something. We'll get into there. So perfect, I will jump onto this and then we'll get all these fields covered and then uh, yeah, we'll come back to it in just a second. a bit of a bumpy ride and a bit of a, uh, a new ride to me. I hadn't taken that back road up to here before so we got a little bit lost on the way but we made it. As I'm sure you can see by the uh, time lapse that we just went through there, this map is pretty darn stunning. Um, some of the visuals are striking. Uh, as we've said there as well, there's a large map with a lot of small fields in there so there's lots to, uh, to work on. Um, so we're going to leave it here, I'm going to continue to get this field spread myself and I've got a few little odd jobs to do around the farm. If you have yet to check out this map, then I do encourage you to go onto FSUK and uh, download it and have a quick look at it. I'll pop the links in the description below. And as always, with this competition, if you make sure that you do vote for your favourite map as well, follow the d links on the description. And you'll be able to check that out and make sure you vote for the best map. 
Uh, but until next time, thank you very much for watching. As always, uh, I have been Simulation for Nation. You have been fantastic. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, give it a thumbs down. And if you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But until next time, once again, thanks very much for watching, guys. Take care, enjoy what you're doing, but most importantly, happy farming.